This is C.J. Chivers for the New York Times. I've reached the area where the elders are supposed to meet. I'm going to go ahead and uh, have the guys start pushing out to set up security in this area over here. Second Lieutenant Justin Smith is new to 2nd Platoon Bravo Company. The platoon is fighting the Taliban in the Korangal Valley in eastern Afghanistan. Hi, Raj. This is his first time in the village of Donga, and he's here to meet with the elders to try to convince them that his men can protect the village if the villagers cooperate with the American and Afghan forces. For American soldiers conducting counterinsurgency operations in Afghanistan, building relationships with local villagers is key to undermining the Taliban. But the reality on the ground here is that U.S. forces don't know whom to trust. Most of the Afghan interpreters ask that their faces are not shown here. They worry about retaliation against themselves or their families. If you talk to the soldiers here, what they'll tell you uh, in Maine is that most of the villagers are waiting to see who's going to win. They will want to be on the winning side, so they play both sides. And they'll tell the Americans perhaps what the Americans want to hear, and they'll tell the Taliban or the other insurgents what the insurgents want to hear. A few nights before, the platoon had ambushed a Taliban patrol and killed at least 13 gunmen. Lieutenant Smith is trying to learn, were these men from Donga or from the other villages nearby? Yeah, he said nobody was from Donga. He said a lot of them were from Donga. There's supposed to be two people. So him, I don't believe that. I heard two people were injured and they came back to the village. The old man tells Lieutenant Smith that the platoon did not ambush the Taliban, but rather a search party a group of local men who were looking for a lost girl. The platoon has heard this story before. All right, well tell them in addition, we don't really believe the story about the little girl as well, because we know for a fact that people were shooting at our outposts that night as well. It can be very frustrating for the Americans who think in many cases they're being lied to, but most of the soldiers are quite pragmatic about this. They understand that the lies have a reason, that. The villagers are trying to survive just like the soldiers are. Over the years in various patrols I've seen the Americans go into villages and distribute radios and winter jackets and hats and medical supplies and a variety of things that they call humanitarian assistance. And we've returned to the village the next day and seen that it's all been collected by the Taliban and burned. Patrolling the nearby Pesh Valley, a different American unit faces another dilemma. How do you identify the enemy? I got him. Here they have noticed several men up on the hills above them. One has an axe, and a bag. The insurgents have networks of spotters on the ridges in the valley that monitor American troop movements. Are these men spotters, or simply villagers going about their daily chores? The two men come down, but the soldiers don't expect to learn much. They know if the spotters are using a two-way radio, they will leave it up on the hill. They know if they have a weapon, they will not appear with it either. Like so many interactions in Afghanistan, it's not clear who these men are. Where are they? Where are they? Uh, you want to go to shops more? They claim to be local men, and only civilians. Under the rules in Afghanistan, soldiers can fire on insurgents only when they have what is called positive identification. They need to see a weapon, for instance. After years of these rules, both sides know them well, and insurgents often put down their weapons and move without them, mingling right among the Americans. Yeah, it's going to be right there to bring some wood and also some garbage for our animals. The lieutenant is not sure. He knows that everyone will give a reason for where they were and what they were doing. Some of the reasons are true, some are not. Wait, uh, wake your father up so we don't have to keep him going. An Afghan unit visits the village of Darbart, looking for signs of the insurgents. Under the long-standing rules in Afghanistan, 
Outsiders rarely enter Afghan homes. Many soldiers are frustrated by this. They worry that the homes are used as armories or safe houses or planning centers for the insurgency. But in this case, it's an Afghan unit, and these soldiers can enter an Afghan home more easily. It's exceptionally dark, and the Afghans don't have night vision equipment. With an American advisor, they search with flashlights, sifting through piles of animal feed, looking for weapons or other signs of insurgent activity or logistics. We'd like to search your house. Where are you allocate? All they find is spent shell casings which they say the Afghans had probably collected for recycling and don't necessarily indicate the presence of insurgents. They search long into the night, finding nothing. There's a natural tension here between searching houses, which can offend Afghans, and needing to take actions that will counter the insurgency or make it more difficult for the insurgents to operate. Every decision is in itself a compromise and no one is sure if they've calibrated their counterinsurgency response right. They likely won't know for years. If he wants to bring the women outside so we can search this room, it's fine.